Matt, thanks for coming in. How difficult, because at the moment most of your attention is on either rehab or obviously the, mm. you know, the, the cycling team, the early, the early days of the cycling team. How difficult do you think it's going to be to try and marry the two when your cricket career potentially uh, reignites? So yeah, look, it, it, it'll be interesting when I'm off, you know, if, if I get to that point where I'm travelling a lot and every, everything else again, but it's, it, that's a long way off uh, for now. What's been great is I've had a, a time over the last few months to put a huge amount into One Pro Cycling. Um, and what, what's become quite clear is that when to, to manage both tasks, um, <clears throat> when I'm doing the cricket rehab side of things, I put 100% into that. And, and only when that's done can I then move to the One Pro Cycling thing. And then I put 100 percent into that so it's, it's trying to keep them very separate and, and manage time the way but but I think it's, it, it is certainly doable the other thing about you know one pro cycling if 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 I need to step back if I need to go and play cricket if I need to go away for any amount of time the management team that we have in place mm. are more than capable to to carry on pushing what we want to do forward um, and I'm I have every trust and, and faith in, in those people to, to, to do that. So I can kind of pull back a little bit and then, then step back in mm. when, when necessary. What can your contribution be to that? Because, I mean, administratively, mm. there's, I mean, there's not a great deal of experience there, but also you've got a sporting uh, a wall of knowledge. Yeah. What, so what, what are you contributing as a CEO there, given that you're not really on the performance side? First and foremost, I'm, I'm not trying to be a professional cyclist. I'm not trying to pretend I know how to win bike races. I think mm. that, that, that's really, really important to get out of there straight away. But I have been involved in, in professional sport for a number of years and, and at the top end for elite level for, for a number of years. So on and off the pitch, there are different pressures, challenges, etc. And hopefully I can bring some sort of experience to, to the guys from that point of view. The other thing is, okay, you know, you, you have your university, et cetera, et cetera, but been involved with, with international cricket for 10 years, it's, it is a business, and there's nothing more brutal than um, professional sport, and you, you learn things along the way, and I think the interesting thing for me, having been involved in the business side of things, is that sport and business are pretty much identical. There's mm. a different language, of course, um, but it's the same thing, right? You ultimately have an end goal, Right, we need to now build a team that's going to get us to that goal. Yeah. Um, and whether you're sat in an office or in a dressing room, it's basically the, the same basic supply. One of the unique selling points, I guess, to the team, apart from yourself, of course, is the fact that it's, it's, there's no title sponsor, unlike mm -hmm. a lot of other teams, uh, quite uniquely. So you've got some very high profile partners mm -hmm. you know, alongside you. How yeah. difficult was it approaching them? You know, sort of putting forward this model that in some ways quite unique and I would think for the sponsors that said no to you are very unattractive. Look, it, we've been hugely fortunate. I mean, to have a brand like FNF in, involved and sign up for three years it gives us a huge amount of stability and, and shows that we're on to something, you know, it, it sort of ticks a box. Says, yeah, this, this can happen. And I don't think it is, it's unique in cycling, but in sports, the England cricket team has three lines on the chest. You can have whatever branding on, on mm. your shirt. That's, that's not a thing. But it will always be England. Football teams, you'll have your logo on your, on your chest. Man United is Man United or whatever branding. So it's not a new thing. It's not like we're trying to reinvent the wheel. It's just bringing a slightly different um, aspect in, into the cycling. And I think it makes sense from the point of view that you work very hard to create a brand, create um, a fan base, a loyalty, an allegiance um, to your team, to your brand, mm. and then next year it, it changes completely. You lose all of that. It's, it, you know, we want to make sure that we have this continuity about about one pro cycling going forward and uh, over a number of years. Is this sustainable? We hope it is, of course, um, and we will soon find out. Um, the the thing I do believe in is that. There is a huge amount of, there, there, there are a number of new cycling fans within the UK. Yes, you have your traditionists, of course, they're yeah. there. But you have a number, you only have to watch a Grand Depart Tour de France, Tour of Britain last year. There are people lining the streets, whether it be through health reasons, environmental reasons. People are getting on bikes, they are riding bikes, they are, they are becoming cyclists. 
and we want to be that team that these people can can embrace um, and and be a part of. Mm. Are you committing anything financially to this? Uh, yeah, um, quite simply. Um, but more and more, that isn't the important thing for me. That the important thing is actually committing your time, effort, and passion. Mm. That's that's what you're putting on the plate, um, and and trying to do something different. Um, that's the exciting part of it. Is right. How, what can we do with this? I, I believe that cycling in the UK is ready to to make a next step and go. There are those. There are hundreds of thousands of people that want to get involved, and be involved, um, and and can we offer them? Um, a reason to get involved. That, that's our challenge. Mm. One of the, I guess, uh, teams in the last couple of years, I guess, uh, uh, almost defined by their policy on anti-doping. Mm -hmm. uh, not wanting to use Team Sky as the example again, but obviously they've got <coughs> things like written policies mm -hmm. and, and, and uh, you know, great transparency, mm -hmm. sort of leading the way somewhat. How are you going to manage that as, as the CEO and, and what's your sort of general policy? Oh, it's, it's very clear. We uh, have a zero tolerance policy. Um, it's not part of look. Let's be clear that every sport has its pros and cons. Every sport has its challenges and, and things that are you know negatives as much as there are positives. And cycling is no different. But there are many positives um, from the, the doping side of things. Of course, it's there, but I don't think it's going to affect us. Every single one of our riders knows we've, we've had the chat. They know exactly where we stand on that, and. As I say, it's a, a zero tolerance policy. Okay. And uh, what's the extent of the conversations you've had with the with the current riders in terms of is it has it gone as far as sort of written written statements or is it just sort of a an agreement? Principles are one of our core brand values, and they've all signed con signed contracts okay. um, that states that. Um, and again, the conversations have been had. They all know where we stand with that. Um, it's, it's, it's not anything that needs more of a conversation. It's not a grey area. It's, it's very black and white. It is not what we're about.